Jenny, good morning all. Yeah, a couple of uh, quiz questions before I get underway. Anybody see any connection between Psalm 119 and Christmas season? No, you can't, can you? Hmm. Well, it does happen from time to time. I, I get out of sync with the, you know, the whole schedule of the year, those types of things. So I, I will endeavour to make some sort of uh, connection uh, between that passage and uh, the celebration uh, season uh, that we're actually in. So uh, maybe a sense of anticipation or you've got no idea what I'm talking about already. Thank you, Lord, that, uh, that, we, that we are a people gathered and we are people gathered in a particular season that in this year has a different tone to it and I think most people would acknowledge that, that there's a, just a different tone, there's a different context in which this celebration is taking place. But Lord, I thank you that it is certainly true that you deal with the depth of the heart of individuals and Lord, we know that's what you want to see released in this season as we've had the opportunity to do this morning in, in listening as, as, uh, as Marlene has shared with us, uh, in singing, as we've taken lyrics of hymns and carols that perhaps we're familiar with, but Lord, they have stirred something within us because that's the nature of worship, that your spirit likes to take that which is reality, that which is truth, stir it and bring uh, expression of it through our lives. And so, Lord, I thank you for the place we find ourselves in, in this, this very moment, that we are a people who are knowing that stirring of your spirit and a connection, an eternal connection with this season that we're in. It is not just a time of the year. It's a time in eternity where we allow ourselves to know that touch of your hand upon our lives in a very specific fashion. So Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this place, in this season. And Father, as we've already acknowledged in our time together, may all that we respond to and give expression to give glory and honour to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Margie set me thinking the other day. She often does that as, as it happens. She was in the process of, is the, is the sound system working? I'm, I'm just, it's all good? Good? Um, yeah, she, she set me thinking. She, Mar Margie's in the space. She's, she's having a little holiday break. She's finished the school year and all that sort of stuff and decides it's time to uh, tidy the pantry. Ladies probably understand this sort of stuff. And anyway, she's in the process. There's every bit of Tupperware that I didn't know existed has appeared on the kitchen bench and there's stuff going everywhere. And I walk in and, and Margie's got this amazing skill. She says, I think there's a lot of things in our garage that you've got two of. <laughs> I wonder why she said that. I did notice two jars of Vegemite on the bench. But it, it's true, sometimes we have these duplicates. So anyway, I filed that particular comment. I didn't respond to it. I would have liked to have, but it wasn't the appropriate time. Um, and, and so I'm in the garage yesterday and I'm thinking, what is here that got, I've got two of? And I, and I thought, goodness me, look, there's something I haven't seen. For, I didn't realise I had it. Now, so you notice how I switch from the women to the men? This is the men. You're listening? Do you know the term men, gentlemen? DeWalt. Do you know that term? DeWalt. Fancy machinery. <laughs> well, I've got a bag to carry it in. I haven't got the machinery yet, but I've got the bag to carry it in. So I thought, oh, this is great. I've only got one of those, so I'll make a point of that next time I'm talking to Margie. And, and anyway, I picked up the bag and I thought, oh, there is something in here. And so I unzipped it and I thought, goodness me, I'd forgot. I never realised, well, well, I must have purchased it. Either that, you know, I don't tend to nick things. I must have purchased it at some stage or another. 
And it's a battery-operated sander. Isn't that a fun thing to discover, men? Never realised I had it. I've only got one of them, though. I keep, I, I'm just trying to build up a bank of comments that I can... Um, so there you are. Next question, how does that relate to what I'm going to share with you now? So a couple of questions already. Got the, got the wheels working? It's very, very important because we can go through the Christmas season and the wheels don't work. We're so familiar with it. We move straight through it, we come out the other side. Nothing's happened. Well, I'll guarantee you something's happened this morning. Thank you, Marlene. That, and I trust you felt it, and you knew it, the testimony of the Spirit speaking into every life this morning. We don't just do church with some sort of empty ritual. People like Marlene prepare and put words together and connect it to songs for the purpose of allowing the Spirit of God to use that to install, instill, inspire, upset, disturb, minister to, whatever. That's the purpose of our gathering. The Spirit of God says, hey, look, these people are gathered together. I see faith. I see depth of faith. I see hearts orientated towards the Lord Jesus. I can move in that sort of space. And you move exactly according to where each individual is at. Isn't that amazing? You know, what he stirs in me and what he wants to affect in me this morning is going to be different to what he does in you. But I know it's going to be totally edifying. That's the nature of his work. He wants to build faith. He wants to release the testimony that's in the heart of every Jesus follower. Anyway. Okay. Uh, we'd better get to my starting point now. Psalm 109. Now, can you see any connect? Let, let me read this for you. Oh, thanks last week, for, last week Rob. Hello. Thank you very much. I did have a look and a listen. Hence this question. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Anybody heard that anywhere before? This is a memory check. Sometimes it isn't, but this time it is. Anybody heard that particular statement recently? Can you recall where you heard it? Last week, yes. At the very end of the celebration, we actually sang. We actually sang, and I sang with you. Just a delayed, I'm always delayed with my singing anyway. You know, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, the way that that works, the way that that works, if I can come back to my illustration or the comment that Margie said, that there's probably more than one of those things in my garage that's a repeat. There's a real possibility that the Lord has installed on more than one occasion something he wants you now to work with. Can you understand what I'm saying there? Some of us have heard a portion of the word multiple times and the Lord's going to bring it up and say, I want to work with that now. It's been stored there long enough. It's been in that pantry. In actual fact, you've got seven versions of what I've said to you. And now we're going to work on it. Can you understand what I'm saying? That's good. I did suggest that I would uh, try and connect some of that, that, that illustration, the little story about the pantry and uh, the, the, the psalm passage. And then into, I'm going to try and connect it quite deliberately with something I shared with you a couple of weeks ago, hence the duplication. You've heard it more than once in a short space of time. Because I, for one, don't want to move on until we give attention to this. The celebration of Jesus. It is a season in which we live. It is a season in which we hear the narrative again, we enjoy the celebration, 
And we just know that, yeah, that's an awesome event and it's increasingly dawning upon us. But I want to deliberately, deliberately just bring forward some things that I believe the Lord has installed. It's been connected to the, the ministry and the word that I've shared with you through this year. And it's also connected to a few other things that the Lord's doing in us and around us. Because I believe it is the way that uh, the Lord actually works. He builds up, as it were, a shared store in the hearts of God's people. And then his spirit says, now I want to release that. I don't want you sitting on that. I don't want you putting that truth in the pantry and duplicating it more and more. I want you to actually see that as a part of your sustaining diet. I want you to see this as, your, as my provision for your, as that little devotional book says, your daily bread. It actually works on the day. You with me? Good. Stick with me. I would like to, and, and it may sound a little bit like the annual general meeting, which can be, a very inspiring event and I believe it was this year as we look at and even this morning even this morning okay did you watch as the pictures came up uh, in regards to the things that have been achieved in this year did you did you follow the pictures and you say that's inspiring that is just so precious look at those lives that have been touched and all the time are you thinking I've actually been a part of that and it's, it's not what Paul talks about as empty boast there were times when he knew his ministry had impacted many lives. And he appreciated the testimony in his spirit that says, I've been a part of what God's doing. You like that? I think it's pretty important to hear that. Hear that, little, hear that little vibration in your spirit that says, yes, I have been a part of that. The Lord's making me increasingly generous and I'm prepared to invest time, energy, resources, finances, whatever, into a ministry avenue that hits the spot and the information comes back and I say, isn't God good? He's drawn me into something he's doing in Bangladesh or in Sudan or in the leprosy mission. I hear the terms and I suddenly realize I'm a part of that. And I know I want to be standing next to Maureen Milne when, when we get to that wonderful place of eternal residence, I want to stand next to her and see all the badges she's got. I don't think it works like that, does it, Maureen? But you know what I mean, don't I? You know, in actual fact, the scripture does testify to that. The way that I work out my faith, there's going to be a sense in which the Lord looks at me and he says, not only have you owned my name, you've lived it. Well done. You've heard that at the end of a, a, a funeral service? Well done, good and faithful. So you've got no idea what they're talking about, do you? Is it the deeds? Or is it the heart attitude that flowed in an action that says, I want to be the likeness of Jesus in this place if I can. By the grace of God, I can. You like that? I do. That's why I'm inspired. That's why I'm going to traipse around the streets of heaven and say, where's Maureen Mill? Probably not. I'll talk to Maureen later. Still got to talk to Margie. Gee, they're banking up, aren't they? <laughs> the people to talk to. Anyway, what's happened in this year? I just, I just want to, just want to, just want to highlight a couple of things, and then maybe stir you a little bit about what some of the things the Lord might have installed. All right, through this year. And, and this, this, is, this is me just, just reflecting for a short time. I didn't have to analyse the year or anything like that. But there's been an increased level of connectedness within this community, this, this community of faith. I've discovered the more and more I meet with you and talk with you, that we've got a, a, an extending connection with the community around us, which is what mission is. People come along and say, how do you do mission? And you say, well, try connecting with the community around you. It's a very natural way of doing it. I'm going to take a holiday for a couple of months. Oh, not from ministry. I mean, from the football club. I couldn't believe how many people you can connect with in a football club. And you only have to do one funeral service and all of a sudden people connect, which is pretty amazing. That's a bridge work that's probably unique to my situation. But there are things that are unique to your situation that only you can work, walk on that bridge. 
because, and I'm, G'day Trevor, how are you? Don't know why I'm looking at you, but I think you're a good case study and I'll leave it there. The connectedness into the community is a privilege. The Lord provides the bridge work in order that the testimony that is the reality of your relationship with Jesus can travel along that bridge. And then ultimately, he does stuff that you can't do. But I'm putting my hand up and say, Lord, enable me to do everything that I can do to make it possible for you to do, for you to do everything that only you can do. Does that make sense? So there's no point in me repeating it. Good. But there's been an amazing sense of connectedness within this community, within our connection to the community, our connection with the Christian community around here. And I do have to say it again this morning. Um, appreciate the ministry that Clive Healy has with the South Coast Ministers Group. He was affirmed again the other day as we had lunch together. And I couldn't believe how quickly they dispersed. It was almost like church again, honestly. Uh, Margie and I sat down and looked at each other and said, you're going to have some dessert and a cup of coffee? They've all gone. Well, I like your company. Good. Hey, let's talk about what's in the... No, we won't talk about what's in the pantry. But there is this strengthening connect in the Christian community in this city. And you see that promotion up on the screen in regards to church together. See, that's not just an event. That's a new venture of the Christian community. And the profile that continues to come through South Coast Christian Community Care is a testimony the strengthening connection happening in a variety of ways. And as I've mentioned to you, and I'm going to highlight in just a moment, a strengthening connect with churches of Christ across uh, South Australia and the Northern Territory. That's the bit I'm going to revisit in a minute because I think it's very, very timely and very, very specific uh, for us as a fellowship. But bear with me for a moment. And if this may sound a little bit like me trumpeting what I do, but I think it's really, really important to just consider how the Spirit of God might stir us. Uh, I've endeavoured over uh, the time that I've been with you to, to cover the full counsel of God's Word. And I endeavour to do it to a certain amount of detail without going into lots of detail that we lose the actual contents of context of what we're talking about. So over these last 12 months, beginning in February... These are some of the themes that we've dealt with. Now, you, I'm not asking you to recall all the detail because I can't. I mean, I've prepared and presented them and it's probably it should be a lot more that I can recall. But I do invite you to just consider, as I bring up the themes, that you might consider that, oh, actually that one did stir me and I'm still sitting on it. You know how the Spirit of God works? Well, one of the ways he works is he installs stuff, a seed, a thought, a possibility, a pointed statement in order to draw a response from us. Living in the presence of God. We looked, I don't know if you can remember that series, Discipleship for Jesus Followers Over the Age of 50. Now that theme was very deliberate. And you might recall it went for 10 weeks. Somewhere in there, the Spirit of God installed something in you. It's in your spiritual pantry. And he wants to bring it out. He doesn't want us, you know, the scriptures talk about storing up treasures in heaven. Not about storing up treasures here. He wants us to be releasing the impact, the, 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 the working dynamic of those treasures that he continues to install. We looked at the sound of the prophet, if you can remember, the book of Amos. It's probably the one series that I've discovered the most feedback from people, people spontaneously making a comment about the nature of that portion of God's word. And the greater percentage of the people that made the comment were along the line that that really stirred me. That's good. Are you sitting on the stirring or are you working with the stirring? Because the Spirit of God doesn't stir to bring up the taste of sugar. You know, something sweet. He stirs for the purpose of moving us forward in our relationship and how our relationship with the Lord would work. And then we looked at uh, how, does, how does enthusiasm, how does zeal for the Lord, how is it sustained? What does it look like? Where does it go? 
that type of thing. And then just most recently we looked at what is abundance, what is life in all its fullness. Any bells ringing? Well, they don't have to ring this morning. It's a matter of in our personal space, in our walk with the Lord, you can say, well, Lord, you did actually show me something. You did actually impart to me something. You did actually stir me on that occasion. I recall exactly what it was. The Spirit of God says, now, let's work with it. So that's the theme side of things. The other thing that I shared with you a couple of weeks ago was some feedback from um, the uh, across our churches, Churches of Christ in South Australia and uh, the Northern Territory. There had begun a, a review process a couple of years back at, at the, the board administration governance level of our, of our state conference. That's all really good. That's, that's been worked on. That's not necessarily directly uh, coming into our space. It will have some impact. It will continue to have some impact for us. But the thing that did come back to us was the work that Mark Reeson did. Mark was uh, moving around our churches, regions, and gathering people together from, uh, from the variety of Christian communities of 54, I think there is now, across our state. Uh, different groups of people to share a conversation about a document that said, is this our identity? Is this, is this a good uh, capsulization uh, of, of, of who we are as churches of Christ? And so there was, I think there was nine groups to finish up with and, and, and Mark at the end got together his notes and findings and collated a short list of some of the common ingredients, uh, common points, factors that came out of these conversation groups. Now again, I'm not, I'm not uh, anticipating that if I asked you, can you remember any of the seven? Because that's not the issue. The issue is, can we agree with them? The number one finding across the communities of faith called Churches of Christ that we agree Jesus is Lord. Boom. That's it. Now, try filing that one. Try putting that in your pantry and thinking I can duplicate it because you can't. He is Lord. He is either Lord or he is not Lord. That's where those questions come in that people do often ask in evangelical circles, you know. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Yeah, well, there you go. That gets you thinking a bit, doesn't it? And then that lovely little song, he is Lord. Simple, powerful terminology. And when we sing it, it appears, the record seems to indicate that it actually resonates as true. I'm not just singing a song. He is Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. Pretty good starting point, eh? Why? Because the Spirit of God works with that powerful declaration. If I'm prepared to own that, the Spirit of God says, that's my starting place. Paul, Paul makes the comment over in 1 Corinthians, and it is a little bit out of context, but still totally accurate. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God will ever say Jesus is accursed. And no one, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I've made the declaration. Most possibly you've made the declaration. The Spirit of God enabled you to make that declaration. That's where he works from. And of course you and I know that once I make that declaration, the implications are enormous. Is that right? Or are they just simple? Or oh, it's a breeze. 
I own Jesus as Lord. It's a breeze. Everything just opens up on this lovely, well-lit path. I know exactly what everything comes in a space. It's a wonderful to know Jesus. That's not what Jesus is Lord declaration means. It means I submit to who he is no matter what. That seems to have been the tone. Anyway, I better move through these other things in regards to the findings of this particular uh, research that Mark had done. Jesus-centred community is the, is the way to go. Jesus-centred community is the way to go. And it's one of the reasons why we, as a people, when we gather, are very, very conscious about building that sense of connectedness. Every endeavour we make, because we know, and as Jesus describes so beautifully in, in, in uh, John 17, which is known as, also known as a version of the Lord's Prayer, he says, the world's going to see a powerful statement of who I am, not by my personal testimony, but by our testimony. The way that we do it together. I can follow Jesus personally, but I do it a whole lot better if I travel with you. How are you going? With me? Good. Stick with me. There's only a couple of others to deal with because it is really designed to be as a, as a revisit. There is uh, diversity in unity brings a richness. And, and that is... Um, the scriptures makes this, Paul again, the Apostle Paul talks about, in Christ there is a oneness, neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, slave or free. So he's trying to make, in, in that context, an illustration. You know, there is diversity in context, there's diversity in culture, but in Christ, in, in Jesus, there is, there is a oneness. And we get back to that powerful statement that the Spirit of God enables us to make, to say, I, I own Jesus as Lord. I stand next to a person who might have a totally different personality. Isn't it amazing how different personalities there are around? I don't know if you've noticed, I do, quite regularly. Some people seem to bounce off the wall and other people just sit in a chair quietly. That's okay. But this whole thing of oneness in Christ is just so enriching. And so the other things that were mentioned was obviously the things that are a part of our Christian communities known as Churches of Christ that we do. We, we hold to, as, as the word is, is put out there, it, it, it is the, uh, the practice. Um, and these, these two celebrations that we have. And, and, and why do we hold to them? Because they are powerful statements. It's, it's a revisiting. It's, it's a re-proclamation. A, a person is baptised. They're saying, Jesus is Lord. I have the Lord's Supper. Why? What am I saying? I'm saying, Jesus is Lord. And so the simplicity of those, uh, those practices as such... Um, Allow us to keep saying it. And the Spirit of God says, yes, I want you to keep holding to that. I've enabled you to make, uh, enabled you to see something. I've shown the identity of Jesus to you. And you have responded with that declaration of your heart and mind and soul and will. And, and you acknowledge him as Lord. Now, we're going to stick with that. And you'll keep reminding yourself. I don't have to remind myself, he says. You need to, though. I want you to keep holding on to that and be aware of that. And the challenges that are before us, there are common challenges across our communities of faith called Churches of Christ. And here are some of them. Like the picture Maggie said, I wonder if people noticed that. That picture was taken when I was three years old. Or maybe a bit older than that. But you and I are very conscious. There may be one or two of you people that are actually in the photo. Maybe. But across our communities, there is this recognition that um, we are a part of an ageing demographic. We are people who really appreciate the history, the journey that we've lived. 
and we are a people who are a little bit apprehensive about the future. Remember the last time I showed that on the screen? People were nodding. Is it because you've heard it a second time that you're not nodding? But it's true, isn't it? What's the future of Victor Harbour Church of Christ when that is our demographic? Somebody like to tell me who's got it in hand? Yeah. Because he is Lord. It is his church. And he will build it. And then I've got to stand at that. I've got to stand at that point and say, Lord, you are Lord. You are Lord of your church and you're going to build your church. And I know I've got ideas of what a church should look like. Wink, 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 nudge, nudge. Look at the pictures. It should look like what it will look like when I started. No? No. It's going to look like people gathered with a living relationship with Jesus. The externals that, that appear will only reflect what's on the inside. Does that make sense? Good. Some people are still with me, but I'm nearly finished. All right. The other challenges that are there, and these, these are the ones that, to me, and this is, not, this is not scriptural stuff that I'm talking about. You know, the, the Spirit of God will use the scriptures to, to work a work within us. But these are some of the community things that we're working with. Some of the people dynamics of being what the Lord is making. And so the issues that are now clearly on the table within the Christian communities that are called churches of Christ are the issues of autonomy. In other words, we do our own thing and you down the road, you do your own thing and you down the road, you do your own thing and that's not going to work. Because the world around us, the makeup of the communities around us are not working with that model anymore. And it's not a matter of conforming to the pressures of the world, but realising that in order to connect with people around us, we need that different shared approach. Anyway, I won't unpack that any further, but simply to say these are, these are the challenges that we're working with. Now, the second part is individuality. And, and I do say straight out, individuality, you know, the individual, your walk with Jesus is critical. How you do your walk with Jesus is critical. It is the very thing that scriptures talk about, that every Jesus follower must work out their saving relationship with Jesus with fear and trembling. That's totally spot on. It's when your journey, or my journey cuts out interaction with my Christian brothers and sisters that I've missed it. Because to be quite honest, I am incomplete without you. I can have a really, really fancy, impressive element of individuality and present myself as confident in Christ, but there's big gaps because you're not there. The body of Christ, and it is that beautiful picture in 1 Corinthians that Paul talks about, it's got multiple parts. You know, I might look like somebody's big thumb, but that's, you know, I've got to have a function in the hand or something, but I've got a part in this body to say. That's why Paul uses that illustration so dramatically, since your thumb doesn't jump off the hand and say, here I am, I'm Jesus arrived. The interdependence, the interdependence, not the independence, the interdependence is the vital ingredient. And hence... I would plan to visit that challenge or those two challenges in next year and the opportunities that I have spent time in this sort of context with you, as well as some workshops. And it's been good to get a little bit of feedback from the workshops that we've been able to participate in over the last couple of years and to know that they're just a part of us working in these areas of being a, a local fellowship, being in the community, but also this individual growth that is so critically interdependent on the people that are around us. And then the final point that I make there, and again, this will be a point of one of the uh, workshops that I would offer, is the person and work of the Holy Spirit. And uh, again, this was out of the findings across our fellowships that there's been an acknowledgement of the person of the Holy Spirit, 
but not recognition and participation in what he can do because he is the working identity of Jesus in his church. Hopefully you can comprehend that as well. Right, I have finished. You say, I don't believe you, Peter, but you do. The findings that are from that particular research that Mark did, I, I have appreciated greatly and I've passed on my appreciation of the work that he did to, to bring it in. You know, and this is not Mark Reeson making his final authoritative statement. It's just the findings that somebody objectively, yeah, objectively can do as they move around, just listen to people. And I think that's pretty exciting. And I, for one, and I don't tend to file a lot of stuff, uh, as is evidenced by my garage, I don't have too many things that there are two of. But this is, this, is, this is working material for the season in which we find ourselves. And for some people here this morning, the places that we might move into in the sense of teaching and, and, and workshops or whatever may well be ground that you've covered. But the value I find is when people have been in that sort of space, whatever, what is, I mean, George Matheson, you know, a little while back, did, did a workshop for our pastoral carers on grieving. Now, some of the people in that room had worked through some of that space, but George took us so much further to appreciate, wow, I think I can better come alongside people who are grieving now because I realise it's a world of people that are, that are in that sort of space as well. As the Lord graciously, and I believe graciously it is, stirs our heart, as it were, in gatherings such as he's done this morning. I believe it is the purpose, and that stirring element's going to keep building and building. And hopefully we'll have the opportunity, here, is, here I am, I'm going to correct, connect to Christmas again. All right, you ready for this? Hopefully you and I will ponder in our heart. Does that word sound familiar to you? What did Mary do when the ministry she was called to was placed upon her? Wow. Mm -hmm. I think I will ponder that. I think as Jesus follows, the possibility of some pondering might well be a valuable venture. Please stand. We'll pray together. Lord Jesus, I declare you are Lord of my life. Amen? Amen? I ask you to connect me into the community, the church that you are building. Amen? Amen? Help me see the variety, the diversity that is to be found in the people around me. Help me to appreciate the different ways you are shaping me and us as individuals in order that we can operate in a particular way in giving expression to being the body of Christ. Amen? Amen? Keep me, Lord, true to the declaration I make. Amen? Amen? Lord, I thank you that as I age, I pause there, I can value the life journey this far, and I can be animated about the certainty that there is more to come. Amen? Amen. You hold the future. The best is ahead. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Lord, for the personal attention you will continue to give to my life so that I can experience greater and greater completeness and can, as a result, invest myself in all variety of shared projects that will have impact for your kingdom. Amen? Amen. Spirit of God, with my Christian brothers and sisters gathered, I continue to welcome your presence particularly as I am beginning to see that you know the building project details in full and you are the one who is able to facilitate it. You are the one who is about, are able to bring about the advancing of that project to the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Marlene.